In the UK alone, there are a staggering 2 million people over the age of 75 living alone and another 300 million living isolated in care homes. One in 10 people over the age of 65 say they are always or often feel lonely, while more than a shocking million of elderly people saying they go over a month without speaking to a friend, neighbour or family member. Although these statistics show the saddening truth about the loneliness of our ageing population, there are some outstanding individuals who completely break the mould. Well, we'd had warning. Um, he had been diagnosed with um, uh, a vicious form of cancer and uh, he took every chance he could, uh, which involved an awful lot of chemotherapy. Um, which kept us very occupied because you have to keep going to appointments and keep him supported uh, and then massive surgery uh, and again he needed support and uh, just you know have his hand held while he went through it he was very game uh, you know fair play he was very very game and after that was all over um, we knew that time was limited and that it would return. Um, so all what we'd done, or what he had done, was buy himself some time. And um, what he did was, uh, which I thought was admirable, and I've done it, was make um, uh, what you call a bucket list. There's a film with Jack Nicholson in it um, called Bucket List. And these guys who want to do something uh, before they die. So he made a list and he completed his bucket list and that's what I'm trying to do. So instead of sitting and uh, waiting for the inevitable, uh, use, use what time you've got. I suppose the worst thing about it is um, it's not being alone, that's not a problem. It's not being lonely, that's not a problem. It's having someone to chat with. Robin had a fairly prolonged illness. Um, and he was diagnosed with cancer probably two and a half years before he died um, and had fairly major surgery. So as the end came closer, we knew, and our mum knew obviously, and a lot of her time was spent uh, trying to fulfil his bucket list. He made a, a, a list of things that he wanted to do, um, the last of which was to go to Paris, and then he, then he went downhill and died. And because everybody kind of knew, it's that awful situation um, when everybody is there taking care of the person, but also almost waiting for the end to come. And it's a, it's a, it's a horrible situation because you want to care for the person, and, but you don't want to see them in pain. And then when they finally go, you've got, you are conflicted, hugely conflicted, because you are deeply upset about somebody you've loved has gone. You're deeply upset because the person who was most important to that person has gone. You know, they're upset. But you're also hugely relieved because they haven't got to look after the person that's dying anymore um, and see anybody in pain anymore. So you're hugely conflicted. Uh, this is um, a photograph of Robin when he was 18. He'd just joined the Royal Navy. Uh, and I never did figure out why a young man brought up in Shropshire, miles away from the sea, would want to join the Navy, but he did and he loved it. Um, well, I've been I was diving from 1988, so I've been diving for a long time, um, and obviously she sees, saw all the photographs that we've been taking and the videos that we've taken on uh, when we're on holiday diving. And then when, uh, after Robin died, she started showing uh, an interest in it and was saying things like oh I wish I could do that um, or I'd love to go underwater and see that I'd love to see this so our response was <laughs> why not oh diving is is just fantastic uh, because it's uh, it's a whole new world full of the most amazing colorful creatures um, like Napoleon Rasses where they've got a big sort of lump on their heads and beautiful beautiful turtles and little tiny nemos i can never remember what they are little, you know the little ones that come out of the uh, out of the uh, sea and enemies and the sea is just full of color and things going on like cleaner fish 
cleaning fish that come up to their station and wait to be cleaned. Uh, I did think I did think that um, because I do suffer a bit from vertigo, that I wouldn't like being suspended over deep water, but it didn't seem to matter. Uh, and I do I do get a bit wobbly uh, on boats. So I took a couple of um, sort of seasick tablets and that seemed to solve all my problems. But it was so magic that you just didn't think about anything else. The colours, the number of fish. Um, oh, swimming towards a huge, um, a huge shoal of bat fish. I thought, I thought it was a reef wall to start with, but we swam towards it, Alex and I, and uh, the fish Parted, and we went inside and the fish closed behind us so we were part of the Batfish show. That was really weird, it was lovely and they didn't seem to mind us one bit. From that you gained the courage and self-confidence to try other stuff, to, to take a challenge and not, to, not, not be afraid. So she had a go at paragliding in Turkey uh, even though she's afraid of heights. Um, she started um, working with um, the birds at the falconry centre, which she absolutely adores, and she's getting re really good at it. She's getting really proficient at that. Just 20 minutes away from Barbara's idyllic cottage is the National Botanic Garden of Wales, home of the British Bird of Prey Centre that Barbara frequently volunteers for. She regularly partakes in feeding and training of these rare birds, and she gives informational talks on her role with them in order to raise awareness for these fascinating and majestic creatures. The birds she interacts with are well known for being top dog predators in the wild and up close and personal these enormous animals shook a sense of unexpected nervousness and intimidation through our team. Barbara handles anything from Atlantis, the white-tailed eagle, who has the largest wingspan of any eagle in the world, to Enzo, the peregrine falcon who is the fastest bird in the world. I have some new friends at the um, British Bird Prey Centre, so we're of a part. We're, we're okay together because we all want to be with birds that are slightly dangerous. Uh, but um, the people I know in the village, my friends in the village and in the church here, uh, just can't come to grips with it at all. They think I'm a little bit odd. I think she's amazing. She's 76, she's completely independent, uh, drives her car, the, the camper van all over the place. She's a qualified scuba diver, she handles falcons, she's joined the WI, she's a member of the Mother's Union. I think she's amazing. <laughs>